course, that verse, Acts 1 8, you know, you shall sure see power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and be witnesses. We know that verse. But I've never preached a message on that chapter. I've used that verse and a couple other ones in there. But we're going to look at it today because it fits right in where we're headed. We started out in John 20. Then we went John 21. Then we Acts 1. The next week's going to be Acts 2. And the series is called Huddle Up. Jesus is resurrected. Say that with me. Huddle up. Come on. Huddle up. Come on. Stay with me now. Here we go. Come on. Now we're focusing. Today's message is called The Huddle of Following. It's not my favorite title, but we did the Huddle of Fear and Floundering. i got to have an F, right? So, And it's what they're doing. They're going to follow him. They're going to follow him. They're starting to follow him. Isn't that cool? Say. Because they've turned tail. They've run. They've denied him. And, you know, they've been floundering. But today we're going to see a little bit of progress. Okay? So here we go with the message. Let's roll, Raj. Just a little background. After Jesus resurrected, he met with his disciples. Say it with me. At least how many times? Four. More times for sure, but at least four that we know that we have. And I call them huddle ups. Huddle ups. He's huddling with the team. That's his team. He chose 12 men. Now he has 11. You know there's 11 on a football team. You know that, right? He chose, he chose 12, but there's 11. And he's huddled up with them. He's trying to get them to, to move the ball, man. Come on, the first two huddle-ups, we called them the huddle of fear. One time he, he meets with the disciples, Thomas isn't present. Did he chastise them? Did he get on to them for failing him? Or you know, did he put them down? Did he get in their face? Did he slap them for leaving him? No. He said, peace be unto who? You. I love you. I'm with you. I care for you. I need you. I forgive you. Okay? Isn't that cool? But they were scared to death. And they were huddled up. Then he meets again with them in another time where they're shut up in a room and the door's locked, I believe. And Thomas is present at that time. And he says the same thing again. Peace be unto you. And he's trying to deal with their fear because they're fearing for their life. Because people in authority, it's people in authority, not thugs, not gang members who killed Jesus. It was people in authority. And you don't think people in authority who can kill will kill if they want to? And that's exactly what they did to Jesus. And they're thinking, we're next. They're coming after us because they have the power to do it. We're nobody. We're nothing. And they're scared to death. Good reason. So Jesus meets with them in their fear. And then they do start to move, but they move in the wrong direction. Guys, it's going to start here in Jerusalem. Right where, right where all this crime was and right where the pain and the murder and the betrayal and everything. It's going to start right here, guys. Not back up at Mama's house. See, they all went back up to Galilee. Okay? And they're moving, but they're moving in the wrong direction. And that's what floundering is. The word flounder means to struggle. But it's in your own strength and in your own ability. And we saw that on last time. So y'all with us so far? Say, in case you missed, maybe I can have caught you up a little bit. So the disciples were struggling. They were moving, but in their own strength, their own ability, and they were going their own what? Their own direction. See, guys, Jesus is going to be out of here. He's, got his, he's, he's done the deal. He's died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He, he still has work to do. You know what that work is? Oh, he's finished the work of the cross. But right now, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, where, he's gonna, where he is making intercession for us all the time. But that's why he, he's got to go. <laughs> okay, guys, this is on you now. That's what he's saying. And they're a mess. They're a wreck. So here he died on the cross, resurrected, and he still can't get to where he needs to go. He has to spend 40 days down here. Are you listening or not? 40 days. Because we're messed up. That's how we are, aren't we, say? But God is this way. He's patient. And he's loving. And that's what we're seeing here. That's what I'm seeing as I, stu as I study it from this angle. So, Jesus helped them with their what? Fear and their what? Failure. If you want to keep living in your fear and living in your failure, you're not going to have too much of a bright future of following the Lord. Amen? If you're going to continue to be just hounded by that, that attack is really from the devil. Okay? We're told to fear not. They say there's over 350 fear nots in the Bible, one for every day. Okay? We're to fear who? The who? The Lord. We're to fear the Lord. We're to honor Him. You know, because fear will paralyze you. 
And then guilt from failure will paralyze you. You won't be a, a good follower of Jesus if you're always living in that. You understand or not? So we've been talking about the disciples, but I've been trying to relate it to us. That's the way I like to study the Bible. So all of the disciples had forsaken Jesus. They had all fled him. That's what the Bible says. Okay? I believe they all denied him too, but that's just Gary talking. They're the very ones he needs to take the gospel into the whole world. Guys, I've spent three years with you. Okay, I really have invested in you, and I need you, team, now to go. Well, they're not going. This thing was like a train wreck. You know what I'm saying? So he takes the time. And they're just about what? Say it again. They're just about what? Ready. Now, see, I, I don't know if you're like me. When you get in the book of Acts... You read Acts 1, but you're so excited to get to Acts 2, <laughs> where the church is born and the Holy Spirit comes and all that. Well, Acts 1, we need to read Acts 1, okay? So that's what we're doing today, the huddle of following, okay? So let's go with the message. So he huddled with them first two, first two times in a room where they were locked up. He huddled with them the third time on the shore at the Sea of Galilee, remember? He huddles up with them this time, say it with me, on the what? Say it one more time. I want you to remember it. He huddles with them on the what? Okay. Where is the Mount of Olives? Well, the Mount of Olives is just straight across from Jerusalem. It's straight across from Jerusalem. You're in Jerusalem, and you look straight across. I've been there, I think, a dozen times. Just straight across, you see the Mount of Olives. I've, been, I've stayed up there you know, on a hotel on top of that hill. Walk down through there. Every time we go, we'll make that walk through, down the Mount of Olives, through the Garden of Gethsemane. How many have done that before? See, see your hands. So a few of us in the audience, see? You remember that, right? Into Jerusalem. So he meets with them very close to Jerusalem. Matter of fact, it's just a Sabbath day's journey. You can't walk very much on the Sabbath. There was laws and restrictions and rules. And so it's a short distance away. So that's where he meets with them. Also, the Mount of Olives, this is a today picture. Thousands, thousands, and thousands of graves are on the Mount of Olives. The Old Testament said Messiah would come, return to the Mount of Olives. So a lot of people uh, were buried there because that's where Messiah will return. That's what a lot of people believe. That's what they did. Also, I, I understand that during the uh, Muslim period, they heard also Messiah was coming back and the Jews didn't want to have anything to do with a dead body, so they buried a lot of their own there. To keep Messiah from coming back. Did you hear me? Yeah, that's a little crazy thinking, but anyway, here we go. What I'm saying is there's a lot of graves there. And in case I miss it, the disciples are going to have to go from here back to Jerusalem, and they're going to have to walk by all those, dead grave, all those dead bodies, all those graves. And they've been there for thousands of years, some of them. And if you're going to get back to following, you might have to die to some things too. Did you hear me? And it might not be an easy walk to get back to following the Lord like you need to. And that's sort of the gist of this message, if you'll just sort of see it from a couple of angles today. So now we go to Acts 1. So we did John 20. We did John 21. You flip the page. Now you're the book of Acts. Okay? So you ready? Hang in here with me. The former treatise, Luke writing, Have I made, O Theophilus, of all of Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, hang in here, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles, say apostles, whom he had what? So Jesus chose these fellows, is that right? And don't forget, Jesus chose Judas too. Okay? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. So he showed himself to the apostles after he had resurrected to the eleven. He showed himself many times. Being seen of them how many days? Forty days. We know for sure he appeared to them four times at least in the scriptures. But because of that, probably other times as well. And speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now hang in here with me. Stay focused. Here we go. And being what? That's the huddle up. Say huddle up. Come on. He huddled up with them. And being what? Assembled together with who? 
with the apostles. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye heard of me. So don't leave where? Jerusalem. Now they'd already hit tell and run where? Galilee. He's meeting with them now on the Mount of Olives. He's saying, don't leave Jerusalem. You know that John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized, say it with me, with the what? Holy Ghost. Not many what? Not many days from now, guys, come on. All right, come on. I mean, I've been here 40 days. I've died on the cross, rose from the dead. Been here 40 days. Not going to be here much longer. Don't you remember John 14? I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. You're leaving us? Yeah. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the who? The comforter, the Holy Spirit. Well, it's time. My time has come. You feel it? Say. And so Jesus is huddled up with them. It's the last huddle with him and the team. And he's helping them with their what? By the way, I don't know if you know football or not. That's what huddles are for. Huddles are for focus. You know, we'll practice plays on a football team. We'll, we'll practice the plays a lot, and we'll try to get them down their psyche and things like that and get them in their memory. But we don't start the game and give them all the plays and go, see you at the end of the game. As coaches, we don't do that. No. You give them a, a play or two, and they have the huddles, and you throw another play in there, and you call some timeouts, but you give them other plays as needed. You understand? That's what huddles are for, to give the plays, okay? To get them focused, focused, focused. Yeah, well, the run didn't work. Well, we're not doing the run again. We're doing the pass to the left this time. You got it, Jack? Say, yeah, the run. Shut up. We're not doing the run again. Go on the left. Get focused. That's what we do. Yeah, okay, come on. So, Jesus is helping them with their focus. Keep reading the scriptures with me. And when they therefore were come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Now that's a good question. It's an okay question. I mean, that's what the Old Testament teaches. Messiah is going to come, rule and reign on this earth. But guys, that's so typical of us. When we get away from following the Lord... Guys, listen, the important thing is following, not a bunch of questions. Did you hear me say? They're asking a bunch of questions. They're actually asking, basically, Jesus is saying, don't worry about what my Father's doing, and don't worry about what I'm doing. Worry about what you're doing. Okay? Listen. He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Don't, isn't that the way we are, though? We'll ask questions. We need to get right with God. We need to get back following the Lord. We need to get back on track with our life for Jesus. And yet just one question, one something, whatever. Yeah, but the church did this. Or sister so-and-so did whatever. You know what he said about whatever. Just another stupid question. Are you listening? Yes or no? Follow him. That's what he's needing here. Follow me. Stop with the questions. Just convenient to ask questions, isn't it? Come on. We're just walking. And a lot of this is me talking. Keep that in mind. So, don't focus on times and seasons and questions, he's saying. Do focus on what? Say that with me. Focus on what? You think the church would be better off today if we focused on following Jesus? Yes or no? Say. We get our focus off. We put it on man. Boy, don't we? Come on. And we're in a ditch. Come on. So focus on following. And that's where this incredible verse comes in. Look at it. But you're going, to, you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, guys. And you're going to be what? Say it with me. Can you say it again? One more time. You're going to be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. That's what it's about. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to receive the power to do what God's called you to do. I think you know, guys, that you can't do it in your own strength. Jesus speaking. That's why I've been spending these 40 days with you. We had to deal with your fear, remember? 
And your failure? Yeah. You know I love you, right? Sure you do. Okay, good. Well, he nailed that with Peter last week, right? Yeah. Well, guys, you're going to receive the power to do what I've told you you're going to do. You're going to carry the ball now. I'm going to be interceding for you at the right hand of God the Father. It's your turn. You ready? You're going to be what? Witnesses unto me. You're going to be witnesses unto me. And I don't want to be ugly, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's just the way it is. God hadn't called you to be a kook. He's called you to be a witness. Not to flop like a chicken. Did you hear me? They don't like it when I say that on the radio. I don't give a hoot. We're to be witnesses to the world. And the world thinks you're a lunatic when you do stuff that's kooky. Did you hear me now? Say There'll be lost people listening to me on the radio and they won't even believe in Jesus. They'll go, well, he's right. When they hear what I just said. He's called us to be witnesses. I don't see Jesus flopping on the floor like a chicken. We're to be witnesses of him. Jesus loved. Jesus cared. Jesus gave. Jesus shared. Jesus prayed. Jesus loved his father. Jesus loved the word. Jesus loved people. Jesus was humble. Jesus was meek. There's enough we can find to do that's Jesus without having to make stuff up. Did you hear me or not? All right, I hope you got that. And if somebody taught you different, that's really not my problem. Okay? Come on. He hasn't called me. I'm kooky enough without me trying to go overboard kooky. <laughs> All right. I know that'll upset some of you, but you just need to think it through. Would you listen to me, yes or no? Say, think it through. Just think it through. Common sense makes sense. I still think that's good sense. Okay? You'll be witnesses unto me. What does that mean? You'll be witnesses. You're going to represent me. Say that with me. You're going to what? Guys, in what we do and what we call what we do is of God, you're saying Jesus told you to do that. Make sure what you do is a good representation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes or no? Okay, so he said, you're going to be witnesses unto me. Where? In Jerusalem, right here. Don't get ahead. No, right here. Follow right here first. Follow right here first. Well, it's hard here, God. Yeah, it is hard. Well, stay right there. Start right there before you start to move on out. So Jerusalem, Judea, then Samaria. You're going to go places that you don't even want to share the gospel with those people because you hate your gut. So that's how they felt about Samaritans. And then you're going to go where? In all. Can we thank the Lord with some praise this morning that Jesus' promise came true in all the earth? Praise the Lord. Come on with me. The gospel's gone around the world, man. It's all over. It's all over. When you read about you don't believe that Bible, do you? I sure do. Because of this right here. Are you kidding me? Is the gospel all over the world? Yes or no? Flat out. Flat out. And it's interesting. There's one name that's recognizable in all nations on the earth. Guess what that name is? And it's even spoken, Jesus. Like Gary, I guess in Spanish, is Geraldo. And they might say Jesus or something, but no, Jesus. You say Jesus, you say Jesus anywhere, anywhere, and they know it's Jesus. You know there might be some pockets of people, I understand that, but this gospel's going around the world. Amen? So somebody, that gives me a clue, somebody must have done their job. These disciples must have got off their rear ends, amen? Because we're here today, right? We're talking about following. So focus on following, Jesus says. Follow me, man. I'll make you fishers of men. Come on. So now it's what? Say it with me. It's what? It's fourth down. It's fourth down. There's no more huddles. No. There's no more huddles, guys. It's fourth down. You ready? How do I know it's fourth down? I just keep reading the Bible. Because Jesus did what? Now see, up to this point, he's been breaking into their huddles. Well, this time, he's breaking from the huddle. Bye. See ya. Later. Bye. Yeah. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly, who wouldn't, huh? Toward heaven as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them. 
and white apparel. And said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you in heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Amen? Who wouldn't be? I'd be doing the same. Oh, man, oh, man, come back. No. Get your head out of the clouds. Your mission's here on planet Earth. You're called to follow now. Go! Can you say that with me? Come on. Quit standing. Say it louder. One more time. Can you say it louder? Come on. Go, man, go! You ever seen a guy take off with the football and he breaks out in the front? Man, you know, man, he can maybe go all the way. He might go all the way! Go, man! That's what he called him to do. Go! The huddle of following. Have I driven you crazy so far? You look at me like, Lord, help him. You're giving me that Tennessee look. She's from Tennessee and it's that, Lord, help him, Jesus. I'm getting it from the second row. Here we go. <laughs> How many of you are learning something, though, just a little bit this morning? Come on, you're learning something. All right, come on, stay learning with me. Come on, come on. We're learning the book of Acts, the first chapter. So, the, story, the message today is the huddle of following. What happened? They haven't followed yet. They haven't followed yet. They're on their own now. What are they going to do? This is good for you and me. This is good for you and me, especially when we get off the path and we're not following. These are three good things to remember. Number one, they're right from the Bible. Number one, say that with me, they what? They returned, but where did they return to this time? They returned where? Is that where he said go? Did he say go back to mama's house, yes or no? No. Return to Jerusalem. And that's exactly what they did. They returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olives, which is right across the way. It's not very far. It's only a Sabbath day's journey. And you know that you've that walked it. It's not that far. And we usually stop at a, a site or two along the way. If you just do it in one little hump, I mean, you know, it's not that far, but it's not hard to do. And that's what they did. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Where abode Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zealots, and Judas, not Iscariot, the brother of who? James. Okay, so here we go. Y'all with me so far? So, they returned. So the first thing to do in the huddle of following is return. 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 That's what you and I need to do. We get away from God. Listen, guys, we need to get back to following Jesus Christ. You listening, yes or no? Flat out. Not your way, not what. And so many people, when they want to come back to God, they, they think they need to get back right with God, follow God, they end up running somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So many people don't deal with the stuff they need to deal with. They go somewhere else and think they can get them a fresh start. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that, but so often, man, you just, you need to go deal with stuff. And they returned. Where did they return to? They returned into the teeth of the devil. Jerusalem, that was the teeth of the devil, man. That's where people in authority just murdered their leader. And they were scared to death. But can't you see a change in the disciples? Yes or no? Is there a change in them? There's a change now. There has been a change. Because now they're following him. And it's, their situation hasn't changed. They're still being hunted down like dogs. But their situation has changed their mind, their spirit, their attitude. Yes or no? Got it? So they return. The second thing, say that with me. They what? They continued. They continued. And I know I'm segueing back and forth. But when we come back to the Lord, we need to return. But we also need to continue in doing some things that are just good things to do. They're right things to do. You might have got away from that. You might have got away from the Lord. You're not doing. It's a good thing to get back and continue to do the right things. Did you, did you hear me? But back to this story and the truth. These all continued how? With what? One accord. And they continued with what? Prayer. And, they, and it's, even, it's another word to prayer. He added to it. And what? Supplication. With the women. Wait a minute. There were 
beautiful women back there. Here, the disciples, they're going this way. Got them in over here on the Mount of Olives. He's meeting back there. They're in this room, the, the apostles, and there's women there. The women, there's women that follow Jesus. Did y'all know that say? I guess women matter, don't they? Guys, honestly, down through the centuries, church has really not given women the place they need to have. And this is Gary Clark talking. Ain't no more conservative fellow than me, okay? From the Bible or whatever. But listen, how can we do that when the women are right there? Are you seeing the women, yes or no? Say. Are y'all right with that? Say. Women are right there. Women are right there in that room. And who else is there? His mama. Mary's there. It's a good thing the disciples went back, isn't it? Say. Isn't it funny? They wondered if they're going or not. There seem to be women there ready to go. I'm not sure about that, but it seems to be. His mama's still there. What you going to do, leave mama? Hello, say. And his family, Jesus had brothers, probably sisters. I don't know what the extent of his family was. He had family. Have I lost you or not this morning? Did you know your following Christ just might matter to some women? It might matter to some, a mama somewhere. It might matter to some family. You ever thought about that? Say, it, it's not just about you. Say, maybe this life on this planet could be about some other people. Jesus telling us, guys, I need you to go back. I want to go to Galilee. Well, what about the women? What about mama? <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. So he goes right back. They go right back there. Does that make any sense to you? This is just me walking through the Bible. I know I'm a little goofy. Here we go. So they continued. How did they continue? In one what? In unity. Guys, listen. Don't come back to the Lord. They, they didn't come back fighting. They didn't come back. You, you denied Jesus. Well, you denied him. You weren't there either. They weren't doing that. Now, are they doing it? Yes or no? They're not doing that. Jesus has worked with them. He's worked on them. They're in one accord. There's no backbiting. There's no murmuring. I'm going to say it just clear as a whistle to you this morning. God didn't call me to referee a fight. He didn't call Gary Clark to have church and referee your fights. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Did you get that real clear here? You're called to unity. Grow up. Get over it. Did you hear me say? Come on. That's what I tell the ball team. Yeah, but you didn't give me the ball. Hush and let's go. We're a team. Are oh, you setting it out? But in church, we all oh, poor sister so and so, and bless her little heart. No one of the church is weak, man, weak and feeble. We need to be strong in the Lord. Amen. Say, how do you get that strength? Come back in unity, baby. Yes or no? Say. Over the years, we've had people at fellowship left us for this reason or the other. It's okay. Good grief. It's a big planet. Amen. Say, lots of churches. I saw somebody the other day. I went out of my way at the restaurant. I let them know. I went over there. I said, I want you to know when we get in that new building, I'd love to have you back. At least I'd love to have you there for when we have the first service of the grand. And they were shocked. I said it to them. I said, I'd love to have you back. I said, you were always a blessing and a big help to us. This ain't about me. Listen, I said, you tell anybody that tells you, you tell them Gary Clark told you, you come right back. But the thing is, we don't want anybody, us including anybody, to come back here in disunity. Yes or no? Say. You hear me, church, or not? Am I making any sense to you? Why? Because we, we're called to be witnesses. The world is turned off by church because they know it. They see it. They see the fighting. They see the politics. They see the crap, I call it. Excuse me. I'm sorry to be ugly. Guys, can we be salt and light in Inglewood? Say. Salt and light and love. And I know we ain't going to hold hands and sing kumbaya together all the time. We know there's hard times that come our way. But we need each other in these hard times. Are y'all listening or not? Say. Can we get an amen or some praise or something? Come on. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Come on. And you know, forgiveness goes a long way. You need to forgive the preacher. Because I got a point coming up. You're going to be mad in just a second. They continued in one accord, but they continued in what? Prayer. Now, prayer is, is praying for others, for the needs of others. Prayer. And it can be a lot of things, prayer. But when you add supplication to it, 
you've taken prayer to a whole nother level. The word supplication literally speaks of desperation. The word supplication speaks of begging. You look up supplication, begging. And a lot of times, you're not just praying for others, you're begging for yourself. See, these jokers, listen to me, they are still scared. Since when do you and I have to get it all perfect to serve the Lord? All ducks ain't going to line up in a row all the time. You listen, they're in prayer and they're in supplication. They're in a room together with women and, and Mary and the others there in the family. And they're scared. But this time they're not running. Did you hear me, yes or no? They're not running. They went to praying. They went to praying harder. And they put their fighting aside. They're this and that. And they're together, man. They're following now, aren't they? Can you feel it? Say. See, I'm so glad. I never preached this chapter before. Maybe you'll say you wish I won again, but I did it. I'm learning as I'm going. Keep looking. Uh oh. So they returned. They continued. And this is a strange word. They rectified. When I put the message together, I always put the notes together. I go over it with Alex. Then I go over it with Raj. I even come out and talk to Dina. I think on this one I talk to you as well. And I preach it to them. They just have to sit there. It's terrible. And uh, I had the word replaced. Because the next few scriptures we're going to look at, and it's not going to take long, they got to deal with the biggest mess. And that's the Judas situation. See, God didn't, Jesus didn't call 12 because he needed 11. He called 12 because he needed 12. Judas was the treasurer. Judas, I believe, was a great treasurer probably. I know he had issues, but I think he, he probably did a good job. There's a hole in the line. Can you say that? There's a hole in the, there's a hole in the line. Jesus has called them to move now and to go forward and to follow him. But part of following sometimes is dealing with mess. Did you hear me, yes or no? Guys, you just can't sweep some things under the rug all the time in your life. Oh, you know, whatever. Well, you go through the same crap again. I use the word again. Mess. That's why I chose the word rectified instead of replaced. Now, this is where you need to hold on. The word rect, I know it's going to be ugly. You're going to hate me for it later. I didn't want to use the word rectified at first. Then I changed my mind because it reminds me of the word rectum. It is what it is. Guys, until you're willing to deal with a mess in your life, you're not going to be the follower that God's called you to be. Did you get that? Yeah, you won't hear that anywhere else in Englewood on Sunday. I guarantee you that right now. Maybe in South Florida. That's why I chose the word. They rectified a situation. What do I mean? I've always thought about Judas to, to betraying Jesus and how it hurt, hurt Jesus. Until I read this passage and really started letting it soak in, did I ever realize how hurtful it was to the disciples. He was one of them. You know? You think it hurt them, yes or no? Up to that point, yeah, they were fearful at times, but they were a team and they had their leader. And one of the team members... You know, betrayed, turned on everybody. You get it, yes or no? So now what are we going to do? The elephant's in the room here. They're fixing to follow. Acts 2 comes after Acts 1, but you've got to get through Acts 1 to get to Acts 2. And so Peter deals with it. Isn't Peter the leader? Say yes or no. Is he perfect? No! <laughs> so in those days, Peter stood up. He was a man that was going fishing just a while back. He stood up in the midst of the disciples. 
And he said, now the number of names together were about a hundred and what? There's 120. And Peter's getting the strength now. And he's going to deal with this Judas thing. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled. What happened was supposed to happen. Isn't that hard to take sometimes in your life? Yes or no? Say. Isn't it hard to take the, the mess in your life sometimes and even the hurt and pain and to say, well, this happened, but it was supposed to happen? How many would have to agree with that? Some pain and hurt in your life, it happened, but it was supposed to happen. And it's hard to even say that, isn't it? It's hard to even say that. I've had pain in my life, lots of it. But for Gary to say it was supposed to happen, that's hard for me to get that out of my mouth. You understand? So Peter gets the strength and he says, this was supposed to happen. It came out of the mouth of David concerning Judas. So over a thousand years ago, this was a prophecy that this was going to happen. And we know he was guide to those that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us. And obtained, excuse me, but yeah, he, well, he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. He was part of us. Do you hear that? Do you hear Peter just talking a little bit? You feel a little bit of pain there? He's dealing with something that ain't necessarily pleasant. You hear him, yes or no? Men and brethren, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. What he sold out Jesus, he went and bought a field. And he fell headlong and he burst asunder in the midst and his bowels gushed out everywhere. Peter doesn't mind telling it like it is. Amen. Come on. And it was known of all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in the proper tongue, Akadema, that is to say the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein. And this is very important, this last part. And his bishopric, old King James word, or his office, say office, or position, or place, let another man take. Now I might have bored you to tears here, but hang in here. Wherefore of these men, so listen, this happened, it's reality. He sold out Jesus, he hurt us. There's a hole in the line. And David said way back in Psalm 109 this was going to happen. I don't know why we didn't see it. It's there in the book. And so guess what? The Bible says, anointed by David, King David, God anointing David to speak it, let another man take his office. And so before we move on, we're going to fill his shoes. Got it, team? Yes or no? Wherefore, of these men which have company with us at the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us the whole time, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us on that mountain, must one be ordained to be a witness, a witness, of his resurrection. So an apostle is one who has been with Jesus from John on and who's witnessed the resurrection. So Peter is very specific here. And they appointed two. Now this guy has like three names. Joseph called Bersabbas, who was surnamed Justice. I'm glad I'm just Gary. Okay, here we go. And then there was Matthias. So two men were chosen. How many men do they need? One. And wonder how many people looked at Peter and said, I wonder what he's doing up there. I don't think they did it because they were in unity, right? And they prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of all men. And I think they'd picked two incredible guys. You show us which two you've chosen. And they prayed that he might take part of this ministry and what's the word? Apostleship. From which Judas by transgression what? That he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon who? Matthias. Say Matthias. One more time. Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven. So now they're back up to what? Twelve. End of chapter 1, Acts, I believe. Okay? So, what did we learn today? Here we go. Can you say that with me? 
If you want to follow the Lord, you need to return. You hear me? Guys, there's no, there's no getting around that. If you're away from God, return to the Lord. Did you hear that today? Number two, continue. <laughs> so many people today travel from church to church looking for the latest, greatest thing. How about this? Return to the old way. And how about this? Continue in unity and continue in prayer and continue in supplication and doing what God says is right. I think that's a pretty good way to live. Amen? Come back. Follow that. That's what they did. And number three, you'll never forget this word. You can return and you can do all this, my friend, but until you deal with the mess, remember that word, until you deal with the mess. I just want to say this. It's, again, me just saying stuff. I'm going to hush after this one, I think. And that is, a lot of times when you've hurt people, you need to try your best to rectify that situation. Whether they forgive you or not, your heart should be broken to, to want forgiveness. Did you hear me, yes or no? That's hard, though, ain't it? Now, that's why I picked a hard word, rectify. Amen, say. Amen. So that's what we learned a little bit today. Now they're what? They're what? They're ready. They're ready. They're ready. Huddle up. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord for His word this morning. We're done. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.